Murphy here. Welcome to the show. Oh, we got a good one for you tonight. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? All right. I'm excited about this show tonight because, you know, the French are known for their fine dining. But to me, the best kind of French cooking is the simple, flavorful, sort of that everyday bistro style of cooking. Love that stuff. That's exactly what we're going to do. You know those small cafes that serve that really down-to-earth food and wine? That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to stroll the streets of France and eat in the neighborhoods tonight. And speaking about in the neighborhood, Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band in the house. Rolling the neighborhood tonight. Yes. We eat some really, really great things. We're going to show them how to make pate. Oh, oh, man. And some other good stuff. Sounds good. So, are you guys ready for a little bistro cooking? Yeah. Hang on to your hats. It's French bistro cooking tonight, right here in MLI. Yeah, 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 I'm so excited. How you guys doing, all right? Great. Smelling a little fronge over here, isn't it? Mussels, mussels marinere, all the different pâtés. I'm so excited about this show. You know, the French love pork, and they love French, also love pork fat. <laughs> Probably as much as I do. I'm going to show you one of their classic salads tonight with uh, a nut-encrusted goat cheese, or chev. And we're actually going to serve those with bacon ladons. <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, lately especially, I don't know, maybe it's tis the season, bouillabaisse. We're going to show you the real bouillabaisse tonight with Rui croutons. And what's more French than... Mousse or chocolat. Oh. Ooh la la. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But first, they all have a little version of a pate. Go to these little French bistros. Sometimes it's duck, sometimes it's pork, and sometimes it's chicken livers. So, let me show you how we're going to make that first. Little skillet. We're going to make a little delicious chicken liver pate. Sounds good to me. First thing. Fresh, fresh chicken livers. And I've actually have these soaking in milk for about two hours. Why? It takes some of those enzymes out of there. Most livers you do that with anyhow. So we're going to have that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little bit of butter. And see, you don't want it to burn if your skillet's hot like that. You can always just cut it before it burns with just a tiny bit of oil. And that will actually raise, that will raise the smoking point of that before we add whatever ingredients inside of the pan. First, we're going to start with a little bit of onion. Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to flavor that onion with some green peppercorns and a little bit of thyme and, of course, a little salt. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to uh, really get the flavor out of that. And then we're going to add a little bit of prominent herbs that they use in this style of cooking. And I, and I love, I use this a lot in my style of cooking. Bay leaf is one of them from the laurel tree. And fresh thyme. So I have a sprig of thyme, and I want to strip the sp sprig of thyme and use a little thyme in there. Not too much. Thyme's one of those very savory type of herbs. You can overdo it too much. A little bit of thyme in there. Now, when the onion cooks for about four or five minutes, 
that's when we'll add a little bit of garlic. And I'm going to start straining. Mmm. Yeah. yeah, put that on your cereal. Mm. Uh -huh. So now, I'm going to add the garlic in here. And then I'm going to add the chicken livers right into the skillet. And we're going to start cooking these, flavoring them with this delicious onion and the peppercorns. If you wanted to add a little caper, you could do that as well. Okay? When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. And then guess what? what? Another notch! Yeah. Got this! Everybody, Emerald Gossi here, cooking a little bistro style tonight. And uh, we have our chicken livers on right now. Let me tell you some of the accoutrements that we got while we were, that's sort of classic that go with this. Little uh, French baguette croutons, a little olive oil, salt and pepper. Inside the oven, 350, nice, nice. There's one. One of my favorite little things here, especially with pate. These things here, gherkins, those little pickles, those little, oh, this is so cute. Look, <laughs> oh, a pickle for a Barbie doll. <laughs> no, I like those things, though. So that's, then they always have some sort of mescaline type greens. You ever notice that? A lot of French bistros, and you order a piece of pate, you get those condiments like that, and you always seem to get like a little green salad. I love that, okay? All right, let's start talking about the pate now. The chicken livers, when they start getting brown, it's time to make them happy. <laughs> so you use a little cognac. You see how I kind of get off the stove like that? Because you don't want a flame on the stove like that. Unless you don't want to keep your eye, you know. <laughs> right, so flaming that out cooking that up, getting it happy. You gotta cook the livers through though, okay? What do I mean by that? They can't be like rare, medium rare. They gotta be cooked through. All right, so we're just gonna let that get happy right now. Let it cook a little bit. Come over to this lane. I get asked this question a zillion times, especially when you talk about bistro cooking about French onion soup, okay? Very simple. And I tell people, you know, when I was learning cooking, I probably learned from 15 different chefs 15 ways how to make French onion soup. Everybody just sort of has a little twist to it. But now it's like, you know what, I do French onion soup the way that I like to do French onion soup. So you can do that little... F some people use brandy, some people like cognac. I personally, myself, like a little bit of sherry. So... While we're waiting on the chicken livers, let's talk about the simplicity of just French onion soup. I think the onion should be sliced. So not too thick, but not too thin. So about a quarter of an inch. This is about eight onions. I mean, it is called onion soup. <laughs> now, some people started with butter, some people started with oil, some people started with a combination. I'm from the old school, so I'm starting with a little bit of butter, okay?
Once that starts, folks, then the thing is, is you put all the onions in there and you got to start cooking them down. But there may be eight cups of onions in here, but I don't know where you get your onions. Where I get mine, they don't come seasoned. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to start. We can come back and re-season, but we're going to start by seasoning right now with a little bit of salt. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper. Why? Because it's fresh. Oh, you know who you are out there. Oh, yeah. I can see all the guilty faces. You got that white and red can in your pantry. It's been in there for about 14 months. It's been yelling at you saying, please open me. Season something. You know who you are. Huh. All right, now we're going to let that start cooking down a little bit. Now, look at this. The chicken livers are just about cooked. Now, turn the heat off. A lot of the moisture is evaporated. That means that this concentration has got a lot of good flavor in here now. Okay? All right. Let it cool. Back to the onion soup. So now we're going to start letting the onions cook. Now the next thing is, is we're going to add a little bit of thyme. This is a personal thing. A little bit of thyme in there. And we're going to let the onions cook. Now, you'll get argument from different people what kind of stock you should use for your onion soup. Some people, some people think you should just use chicken stock. Some people think you should use beef stock. Some people think you should use a combination. So look, it's whatever you like the taste of. I'm using the combination of brown chicken stock and a little veal stock, because that's what I had today. OK? So we're going to let that cook. Back to the old pate. Once this cools, oh, and it's cool right now. We're going to discard the two bay leaves because let me tell you something, you don't, you don't want to be eating them. They're so cool right now, we're just putting it right in the food processor. And then what we're going to do is we're ready to make the pate. So we're going to start pureeing it. Oh, yeah, it's really cool. Now, we're going to scrape this down. Then let me show you the classic way of putting this back together. You got to have cold butter, about four tablespoons, roughly. Take that out, put it in. Now, we got pate. We're going to taste it. And that's when your brain's going to go, I think it needs more salt. <laughs> so you, you know, if your brain works like mine, so OK, we'll put a little more salt in there. Could use a little bit more pepper. OK, so we'll add more pepper. Now. Going to mix that in. I decided to use this particular pate in little molds like this, little ramekins. So I'm going to fill them up, and I'm going to refrigerate them. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. Back it.
Cliff on keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, friend Lewis there on the horns. Sir Charles on bass. Got Mr. Texas Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My good pal, Doc Gibbs in the high. Oh, boy, if you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, cooking a little bistro food tonight, getting back to the onions right now before we finish that wonderful chicken liver pate. Just taste them. Cook down, cook down, just taste them. I did. Needs a little more salt. A little pepper. Now, for me, I'm going to add a little sherry. Okay, a little sherry to mine. And then what we're going to do is you're going to let this start evaporate. Look at what it's doing to the onions, getting them all happy in here. Okay? Let that evaporate, and then I'm going to add my stock on here. Okay, bring it to a boil. We're going to let it simmer. You with me so far? Yeah. All right. After we put the pate inside of the molds, this is a great little hors d'oeuvre because you can do this ahead of time. You can do it two days before, three days before. Cover them up like this with a little bit of plastic wrap, and then I'll show you when you're ready to take it to the table, it's really quite simple. Here's how I like to do it right here. I take the pate, and I don't take it out of the mold. I leave it in the mold so that they can scrape it and scrape it all nice, nice on a few of these croutons like this. Okay? This is great to have a couple of these around the house, too. You know what I mean? Little hide-and-seek hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> oh, I love that game. Then, take a little bit of that green salad, some good extra virgin olive oil, a little salt. See, you got distributed. Some pepper. Then what I do here, folks, is just take a little bit of that green salad like that, put a little here, put a little over here, a little over here, a little over there, just like that, okay? Now, you can garnish it now with some of these gherkins. If you like capers, you could do that, or you could do it with more green peppercorns. And the classic bistro chicken pate, voila. Yeah. There you have it. Right already. Thanks. Now I'm going to add my stock, and French onion soup is going, going on strong. Let it come up to a, a boil, then we're going to let it simmer. Then we'll check the seasoning later on. Over here. I told you earlier about chev. That would be French goat cheese. Really cool salad that you can do, and you can do this ahead of time as well. You can cut out of a log some pieces, maybe about two inch, three inches, okay? Season it up. Then what you can do is take an egg, an egg white with a little bit of water and just sort of give it a little whisk like this just to foam it up. Then in this thing, what I got right here is I got walnuts, breadcrumbs, and a little essence, which is what's giving it the color. So I take the goat cheese, Take that, dip it inside the egg white, then I dip it inside of the nut, and now I've got a nut-encrusted goat cheese. With me so far? Oh, yeah. Ladones, I talked about that yesterday. Those are big, nice pieces of bacon like that from the pork belly that they use in a lot of salads. Love that. Cooked about four or five pounds of that last night. Look what I got left. <laughs> I had them inside of my pillow. I thought everything was going to be fine. Now, the nut-crusted goat cheese, folks, what you're going to do, once you crust them, put them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. You can either pan fry them, or the other thing on a little buttered pan is that you can put them in the oven at about 375 
degrees. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> If you're just joining us, shame on you. Emeril Lagasse here cooking bistro style tonight. I'm kind of excited. I've got more stuff going on right now than, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, our onion soup's going. Chicken liver pate with a little cognac. We just served that out there right now. And I got goat cheese. Goat cheese, goat cheese inside the oven. It was encrusted and it is beautiful. So, let me show you how to first we're gonna finalize this salad right here. Leave the goat cheese just kinda sitting right there and let me show you this. Gonna make a quick vinaigrette. Classic. Little uh, champagne. Little champagne uh, vinegar. Dijon mustard. Some shallot or shallot. So we've got that together there now. Now, take some good olive oil, maybe from the Provence, drizzle it slowly. The mustard is what's going to be the emulsifier here. That's what happens when you really cook. <laughs> now, we've got a nice, delicious vinaigrette here. And now we're ready to show you how to just sort of watch this. I've got some greens. Gonna give them a little salt. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna pour that nice vinaigrette right over that. See, our onion soup is just simmering along real nice. So here's how you do it. Classic. Just toss the lettuce in the vinaigrette. Take a few chives. Lettuce goes on here. Some toasted walnuts. Some of those ladons. <laughs> you got it, brother. <laughs> now, take the nice herb-crusted goat cheese. It's still nice and warm. And you're going to just put one of those there like that. So the, the magic is here. When you start eating the salad, okay, you got the nice vinaigrette, real simple. And when you start biting into the goat cheese, it sort of does like that gum stuff. You know that <laughs> I guess you had it been there, I don't know. But <laughs> it worked for me, but there you have it, a little Ladon salad with encrusted goat cheese. <laughs> hey, I thought this was pretty cool. Check it out here. I got a little halibut. I've got monkfish. I've got tilapia. And I've got delicious red salmon, excuse me, red snapper with clams and mussels. And the reason for that is, is that we're going to make a bouillabaisse base right now. Okay? And what it is right here first in this little rondeau like this, I'm going to start with a little bit of olive oil. And what I'm going to begin with is with some onion. And 
Fennel. Fennel. Fenoki. Fennel. I have some diced and some shaved like this. Fennel. Very, very, very important. Now, we're going to add a little bit of salt to that. Let's talk about bouillabaisse for a minute, no matter where you're making it. But in particularly in the Marseille region. I mean, it's like religion. And really what it was was became really sort of the local fisherman's dish. And they would come in with the boats and they would sort through the fish and they would keep all the small little unique fish for themselves. Now, I've had some incredible experiences with, the, with bouillabaisse. Get the fennel flavor out. Here's the next important ingredient. Next important ingredient, saffron, okay? Saffron. And then once the fennel gets a little flavor, we're gonna add some garlic to that as well, okay? So now that's that. Now, another key ingredient to the deglazing of this is a French liqueur called Perno. Perno is like uh, licorice, okay? But a lot goes a long way. So we're just gonna use a little bit of this to start with. <laughs> Then what we're going to do is we're going to add some tomato. We're going to add a little bit. This is the tops of the fennel bulb. But a little of this goes a long way. Save some of that for garnish. Now, now that we have that, what's the next key ingredient? The next key ingredient is fish stock or fish broth. That's what's going to be the broth part of this. Generally, this dish is usually served in two bowls. One for the soup part of it, one for the fish part of it. Okay? Classically, at least. Now, once this comes up to simmer, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start adding our delicious, beautiful filet of halibut, okay? We're going to add our delicious filet of monkfish. We're going to add our snapper filet inside of there. And we got some beautiful tilapia today, okay? Now, what we're going to do now, got to season that a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is make a classic, what's called rui, which is a garlic mayonnaise. I'm going to take egg yolks with some lemon juice, a little cayenne pepper, and garlic, and I'm going to make sort of a garlic mayonnaise. Well, you'll see when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. <laughs> Cooking up a storm here tonight, bistro cooking. Hey, let's get a little uh, cam jam on the old bouillie base. See? Here's another thing, folks. You try to tell people. It's a food of love thing. Let it simmer. You know, they go jack it up full blast. Fish is all broken up. You know, it's all, you can't even find it anymore. If you wanted fish soup, you could have had that. Want bouillie base, you gotta use your knob. You know? <laughs> Low, medium, medium high. Think about it. Should use it more often. Next thing we're gonna do right now, very thin slices of potato, okay? Very thin slices of potato, all right? Right on top like that. We'll let Letting it cook. We're letting it get happy here. Mmm, yes. Happy. Oh. Oh, yes. It's getting happy right now. Now, look. Cover it up. Knob. Medium high. Medium low. Medium low. All right. Let me show you. French onion soup, 45 minutes after you let it simmer. And you've seen it here because we're really cooking. Here's what we're going to do. Taste it. I have. Delicious salt and pepper, not too much, and the right amount of sherry. 
Now what you do is you use these little French onion soup gratin bowls. And when you're ready to do that, fill it up just about up to the top, about three quarters. Nice and see all the nice onions in there. Then what we're going to do is a common cheese classically used for the soup called Gruyere. It actually comes from Switzerland, not France. Really, really tasty, delicious Swiss cheese. A lot of flavor. Fantastic for onion soup. Make some of those croutons with your French baguette just like we did for the pate. Here's the great thing about onion soup too. Take it like that, you turn it off, okay? Let it cool. A couple of ice cubes in there to cool it down. Put it back in the ice box, it's even better tomorrow. Take a few croutons, toasted. Put a few like this on top. Then you take the grated Gruyere cheese. And then what you do like that, that Gruyere cheese, just on top like this. Oh yeah, babe, I like mine really cheesy too. So now we get the cheese on top of our French onion soup. Set the oven on about 450 degrees. And then we're going right to the oven with it. Be careful. Inside the oven it goes. And we're gonna, what they call is a gratiné, is what we're looking for. A little gratiné when that cheese gets really really nice and golden and bubbly and it's doing all that stuff. Oh, I love that. <laughs> now, I'm melting down some chocolate here. I'm having a chocolate meltdown. Because <laughs> having a little chocolate meltdown because we're getting ready to do a little mousse or chocolate. And then what we're going to do is we got some egg whites here. We're going to get them egg whites good and stiff. Then when they get good and stiff, we're going to add, oh, about two, three tablespoons of granulated sugar to that to make a meringue. Okay? You with me so far? We'll slow that thing down. It's getting excited. <laughs> now, after the potatoes in the bouillabaisse cook, now what we're going to do is we're going to layer our shellfish right on top. Okay? Now, sometimes, most times in Marseille, you won't find shellfish in the bouillabaisse, but you know we had to respect tradition on Emerald Live and kick it up a notch. <laughs> when we come back, bouillabaisse, mousse or chocolate, stick around. everybody cooking a little bistro tonight boy we're getting so excited I figure I better start the chocolate mousse before the machine breaks <laughs> kind of got a flat tire better known as well I won't go there anyhow so I got it the meringue really good and stiff now and then I also whipped some whipped cream that's the basic three components to a simple classic chocolate mousse going to show you right now. First thing, we're going to take and move both 
white ingredients, meaning cream and meringue together, even though the density, the heaviness is a lot denser. And you're going to fold, not stir, fold. Very important. The chocolate mixture, melted semi-sweet chocolate down. If you need a little bit more sugar in there, you can. Now, stir that in. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add the chocolate mixture to the meringue and cream. You hear that? That'd be Bowie Bay's talking. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is you got to fold this in, fold it. And you fold it until there's no more signs. It should be all milk chocolatey, okay? And you keep folding it in and folding it in. If you stir it in, you knock down all the air from the meringue. That's why you got to keep folding it in like that, okay? And it'll start coming together. Now you can do whatever you want to do to it. If you want to just put it in a big bowl and stick it in the ice box, no problem. That's generally what I do. Stick it in a big bowl, put it in the ice box. After one of those long Sundays of football, just get a spoon, forget it. <laughs> so that's chocolate mousse. You can put it in glasses right now. One other trick, you could add a little bit of Grand Marnier this French orange liqueur, just a little, or you could save it and drink it with it. You know, that's just a little bit of that in there, not too much. That's chocolate mousse. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. Okay, you with me so far? Yeah. All right, now, wow. it's time. Okay. <laughs> First thing we're going to do, we're going to go in without breaking up the fish. We're going to go in and get some of our shellfish, okay? right off the top like that. <laughs> then, this looks like a good portion for me. <laughs> then we'll go for some of the fish without breaking it up. There's the monk. Oh, there's some snapper. Oh, look, at there's another big piece of monk. Oh, yeah, there's some more snapper. Oh, yes, indeedy. <sighs> and I told you, part of it is like the soup part of it. So you can either do it all one, or you could serve some of this broth, and then you serve the bouillon base. Now, let me show you the right way to finish it. You got these, the rui, the red pepper mayonnaise. You can put that like such. Here's what I do. I just sort of take them and fan them out like this. They're like little anchors. And then what I do, maybe just put a couple over here. What I do is I just take the Rui and I just sort of do this thing to it. I mean, why play around, right? It's just like a little, and a little over here like that. Okay? And for me, folks, that is the real deal, the booyah base of love right there, okay? <laughs> now, what I do is I take the chocolate mousse, stick it inside of the ice box, Check that out. See if you remember the, you're back in Mar Marseille. <laughs> what I do is, look at this. Oh, Jay, I just put him right in these beautiful glasses like this. Hi, Jay. I put him in these beautiful, thanks for staying with us. I put him in these beautiful glasses like this, you see? And then what I do is I just take a little bit of shaved chocolate like that, okay? And then I just bam, bam! like that. It's 
give it a little bam and like that. And there you have it, Moose or Chocolat. Did you all have a good time tonight, folks? I'm Emma Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me.